which includes the upfront depreciations like the 179 and the special depreciations, which could basically result in allowing us to, in essence, just expense the entire thing as if we were on a cash-based system in the first place, right? So that's the general idea. So we're on the special depreciation at this point in time. So now we have the question of when must you recapture an allowance? So notice a couple things just to keep in mind with depreciation that causes complications. Uh, note that as we depreciate, if we were to depreciate, say, evenly on like a straight line basis, then typically we're allocating the cost over the useful life and the book value of the property or the adjusted basis of the property would theoretically line up to some extent over the life of the property so that if I was to sell the property at any given time, it would be something you would think somewhat close to the adjusted basis of the property in terms of the sales price. This, there's an exception with regards to real estate, for example. Real estate could go up in value even though the building itself deteriorates in value because it's a physical thing uh, that deteriorates. So that's a bit of a, an unusual situation to some extent, but all other property like equipment typically will go down in value and if we allocate the cost over the useful life, you would think the adjusted basis would be somewhat close to mirroring the fair market value at any given time. That would be like the ideal situation. But when you have accelerated depreciation, which the maker's depreciation is a form of accelerated depreciation, and you add on top of that the 179 deduction and the special depreciation, that means that you're basically taking all of the adjusted basis and getting the benefit from it in year one, almost like you just expense it, which means you're negating the whole concept of the accrual basis that we tried to start doing in the first place. 